नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यूर वॉचिंग आर शो परस्पेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ की सिग्निफिकेंट इश्यूज इन नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल डोमेन टुडे वी गोन टॉक अबाउट द यूज ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस in the field of education technology has always played an important role in education but its current use is uh, more prevalent than ever thanks to the increased availability of smart devices and web based curriculum a new dimension has been added with swift advances in the field of artificial intelligence now the national education policy of 2020 that is nep 2020 recognized the immense potential of ai and recommended its integration into the education system to increase technology integration in schools the cbsc in october last year introduced artificial intelligence and the internet of things in the school curriculum for classes 6th to 10th ai has the potential to transform education by making it more efficient effective and accessible to students worldwide however experts say it is crucial to ensure that the use of ai in education is ethical and responsible and that it complements the work of human teachers rather than replacing them so today we'll take a closer look at uh, the uses of uh, artificial intelligence in the field of education where do we stand today what uh, are the challenges there which needs to be overcome and how can we use it uh, in an optimum manner and for better results uh, and for more on this we joined by a very distinguished panel of experts let me first uh, introduce them uh, to you professor m jagdish kumar is joining us is the chairman of university grants commission that is ugc professor dinesh prasad uh, saklani director of ncert is also with us uh, mr jaspreet bindra founder of tech whisperer limited uh, is also joining us from united kingdom and mr jitain jain uh, cyber security expert is is also with us welcome all of you gentlemen uh, to sunset television i'll first begin with you professor kumar let's first start by understanding you know the aim and the focus of nep 2020 when it says that uh, artificial intelligence should be integrated in a much better way with the uh, you know curriculum be it at the school level or at the higher education level as well what is it that we are trying to achieve here well uh, you see today technology is advancing very fast you know that uh, you can put uh, even thousands of books in a small hard disk uh, which can be held in your hand and also there is enormous information in the internet but having greater access to large amounts of information is of no use unless we are able to study this information comprehend this information and critically think about it mm -hmm. and these are the processes of learning so therefore on one side we have enormous information available to us because of the technological advances on the other side unless we emphasize uh, the importance of studying reading comprehending and understanding real learning will not happen okay so when our educational processes make our students good learners that is when we say that we have provided them uh, quality education when i say quality education it means that we are enabling our students to acquire knowledge and skills and use these knowledge and skills in a proficient manner uh, to find pragmatic solutions to pressing challenges in their lives and works so the goal of introducing ai in education is to enhance the learning experience of the student uh -huh. so that outcomes are enhanced um and 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 make the student more creative and a good learner and that's the purpose of introducing ai in education okay okay fair enough uh, dr saklani i'd like to bring you in here because uh, you know uh, the uh, cbse in uh, october last year brought in uh, ai and uh, internet of things that is iot in uh, the curriculum of from classes 6 to 10th now what we want to understand here is that what are the key focus areas uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, you know these these concepts of ai and iot for uh, children studying in classes 6 to 10th uh, where are we beginning from and and uh, what's the path we we are trying to take Dr. Saklani 
Dr. Saklani, you will have to unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, yeah, I have unmuted. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, as uh, Professor Kumar has rightly pointed out that AI is a process which provides us a learning, you know, in a better way, critical thinking and learner develops the quality. So if we start at school level, then initially we have to think about that at which stage the kid is there. From sixth to eighth, it has to be initiated in a very uh, integrated manner. It cannot be a separate subject, but we gel it into our syllabi and in different courses of the study uh, so that the student can get the fair uh, idea of how to use the uh, artificial intelligence while learning or while knowing any subject. There are so many uh, areas of study and uh, we cannot pressurize the students and burden the students with a separate subject, but it has to be integrated and uh, it will be integrated in a better manner and our uh, NCF for school education pre-draft has come. So while taking it forward, we'll like to gel the component of AI into our, across the subjects so that uh, it can bring a synergy in the learning process through the technology. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Bindra, you know, uh, the big question here is that uh, all of us understand it's a developing technology and uh, there are, there are lots of uh, developments which keep on happening every other day. Now, how can we ensure uh, ethical and uh, inclusive as well as uh, equitable use of AI in education? Now, those are very, very important concepts because uh, there are challenges uh, when we are talking about a developing technology like artificial intelligence. No, thank you very much. I apologize in advance. I'm not in a very private setting, so I might not be very clear. Uh, but uh, uh, both uh, the chairman UGC and the director NCRT said very relevant things. Uh, see, uh, AI uh, is a very fundamental technology. It is as fundamental as perhaps electricity. And much like electricity, it shares two things with electricity. One, electricity is horizontal. So it runs across everything. Even today, I mean, uh, any social networking search, uh, enterprise uh, efficiency, it, it, runs across everything and so it so as director ncrt was saying that it's not perhaps at that level a separate subject but it pretty much has to be embedded across everything that we are are, are uh, doing and teaching students and uh -huh. the second thing about uh, it vis-a-vis -vis electricity is that much like electricity we don't think of artificial intelligence unless it's not there you know because it's so pervasive and only when it goes out then we know oh this is not there and so, but, but what now the latest changes in AI, the latest developments, which is generative AI, which, you know, we know by chat GPT, GPT-3, GPT-4, etc., has done is to bring that uh, from the background to the front. And we've realized the power of it. So, two things I would like to say specifically in response to your question. Uh, one is that among many other impacts that it will have, one of them, the, perhaps the earliest impact was whenever it when it came out four or five months back was felt on education uh -huh. because generative ai can generate you know it generates ideas generates essays generates thesis generates papers generates paragraphs generates language and so you know it it has a direct impact on how students therefore can do their you know coursework their uh, work etc and also how they can use it to do their coursework better so okay. it's not that you know these things will replace the students' abilities, but someone using it could do better than the student. Okay. And finally, on the ethics part, uh, you've raised a very important question. However powerful and wonderful these technologies are, especially generative AI, they have a very dark, unethical side. And I think that specifically vis-a-vis -vis students, and in fact, I might say school students, we are uniquely placed that we can start teaching the students about what is fair, not fair, whether it's true fake news or true news, how to detect, how to figure out whether this is AI generated versus, um, uh, you know, human generated. And from there onwards, you know, as they grow up, ethics and uh, in, in this powerful technology will be ingrained in them. Okay. So that's a big opportunity. Okay. Okay. Jitain, in, in your views, you know, how do we use AI and unleash these opportunities which are uh, all the uh, three gentlemen here are talking about. I'm sure you will have a lot more uh, to add to that as well. But at the same time, you know, deal with the potential risk elements as well. Jitain, you will have to unmute yourself again. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so to pick up the same thread with uh, you know the chairman UGC and director NCIT left, I think we are fundamentally looking at two aspects of AI. One is from the from the learning perspective that how do we teach uh, our students uh, you know coding uh, or maybe you know teach them about artificial intelligence, how to be better you know skilled engineers uh, who can work in the field of artificial intelligence, and we now we we incorporate that talent we identify the talent right from the you know 6th or 7th class and we start teaching them about technology coding and ai that is one aspect of teaching now second is the aspect that how do we change the educational landscape altogether by using ai and that is where i think the fundamental uh, challenge lies in my opinion uh, you know in my experience i can confidently say that we'll have to revise our national education policy within couple of years uh, as a chat gpt4 develops both from the ethical perspectives from learning perspectives from evaluation perspectives i mean our whole educational system is based and degree uh, uh, giving system is based on uh, you know fundamental evaluation model that we evaluate a person after doing certain thing we ask him to write a thesis a viva if it is conducted for school students they have to go through certain exams certain essays or assignments are given but if everything of, of that sort could be conducted by using a system technology and without getting caught in plagiarism and i think this whole model of research and evaluation will fail so i think we'll have to bring in that perspective of ethics from the evaluation perspective but if you look at the overall picture i think artificial intelligence will be the biggest equalizer in the educational sector i think ugc has done phenomenal work in terms of making online classes online classrooms online you know learning from iits and nits available for the rural students that was a great equalizer because uh, these rural areas had technology and high speed internet available from digital india program and you got the best of the content available from best of teachers okay now still so that was one advantage but but what ai would change is now you will have personalized learning personalized assistive learning you can evaluate assist and teach a person according to his ability you will not have a, a model in the future where one teacher is teaching 30 students at his pace and students will have to like match his pace now ai you by using ai you can create smart content you can do smart evaluation according to the learning pattern of an individual student it will become more personalized and then you will you will start teaching 30 students 30 different ways okay. according to his abilities now last point i'm trying to make is that look now you will have the best teacher available for every student in india it will not be that one teacher, you know, IIT teacher is available for 300 ITNs or other students who can, who can, you know, use his lectures. Now, by using the technology like conversational AI, conversational AI, which is available 24-7, mm -hmm. now a student can learn anytime with the same best quality of teacher and everybody can learn using the same best quality of teacher because AI will be the super sum of the best of knowledge of every teacher. Okay. So I think that is going to be the biggest equalizer and second, I think we'll also have to see that how do we inculcate ethics uh, in the school. I mean, we have already tried this grading system by not giving marks. Mm -hmm. At some places it has worked. At some, you know, places it has completely collapsed. Like in Delhi University, you see everybody getting A plus grades. And then, you know, you do not have a mechanism to then evaluate. And then you go on and fall back on this uh, competitive exam model, even for the college admissions. So. If you do not inculcate ethics, I think every PhD researcher will be using chat GPT-4 to write his thesis. Okay. Every student who would try and use an AI technology to write his essay and homework, and the, by the time you evaluate him after a year, where you figure out that he has not been writing himself by, by using technology, it will be too late. Okay. And his year will be lost. So in my opinion, I think both perspectives have to be seen. One, how do you teach students by using AI with ethics? Second, uh -huh. how do you use AI itself in the educational system to transform the entire system. For example, one last, you know, 30 seconds example. Uh -huh. I mean, you don't have to buy now the AR and VR based content uh, from big companies. You can use technology to create your own AR, VR based content. content. Like in a biological, uh, you know, the, the chemistry, uh, creating a virtual lab. Everything now will be available. In, indeed, cost. indeed, there, there are there are there are immense opportunities out there, Jitain, as all all of you are pointing out. But let me take that point of yours uh, on on the, on the ethical part, in which uh, you know Mr. Bindra also referred to to uh, both the gentlemen, uh, Professor Kumar and uh, Professor Saklani as well. Professor Kumar, I'll first begin with you. You know, what's our plan to to deal with these these challenges on the on the ethical part? Of course, there are immense opportunities, endless ones, if you look at the use of artificial intelligence and. Uh, the potential is, is also huge. But then uh, 
dealing with the ethical part as well. How are we trying to build it uh, in, in our education system while introducing artificial intelligence? Um, I think we need to make our discussion into two parts. One is teaching about artificial intelligence to our students at the school level itself and using AI systems or AI driven agents to improve the learning experience of the students. So let us keep these two separate. Okay. Now, if you are talking about teaching our students from school level itself, uh, the artificial intelligence, you see artificial intelligence is all about using models or algorithms uh, to study our data, identify patterns, and then make decisions and learn from this experience as more data is gathered. Uh, so how do we teach our students to develop these models or algorithms? So that becomes the educational part of uh, uh, the uh, students, right, in the schools. Mm -hmm. Because in AI, the heart of AI is machine learning. And machine learning um, involves various uh, disciplines also, you know, computer science, statistics, um, optimization theory, um, complexity theory, probability theory, and so on. So it, it's a, it's, students have to learn on the basics of all these things to be able to write these algorithms and build these AI systems through the process of machine learning. Mm -hmm. So, that's it. But the most important other aspect, which will ultimately lead to the ethical issues also, we need to look at the ethical issues also, is that how can we use these AI-driven agents, uh, intelligent agents, to improve the learning process of our students? Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to tell you where the ethical issues will come. Uh, the, the very rudimentary AI-driven learning process is called AI-directed learning. And here, the AI machine already has a predetermined knowledge, and it directs the uh, student to, to do certain tasks. It is just as similar to a teacher in the classroom telling the students, you do this, you do this, okay. you solve this. And, and then uh, you uh, achieve a desired goal, then the teacher assumes that, okay, you got 80% marks in this test, therefore uh, you have uh, achieved certain level of learning. So a directed learning is just like a teacher teaching in the classroom, but it's done by a machine. But however, we want to move from there. Um, what is the use of using um, an AI-driven machine which just behaves like our teacher? Um, we want to make our learning student-centered. And that student-centered learning process is created when we move, migrate to what is known as AI-supported learning. Mm -hmm. So here, the student is a collaborated collaborator with the AI machine. And the AI machine continuously collects the data from the students, observes how the learning process of the student is improving, and it takes as an incremental input to change the learning process itself. Mm -hmm. So here, the AI-supported learning, the idea behind this is to promote a learning system where the learner becomes a constant focus. The okay. machine helping the student and then um, continuously evolve the learning process by collecting and analyzing the data from the uh, learner. So, in other words, the learner and the AI system are becoming collaborative. Collaborative uh, approach. Collaborative approach. Okay. But the, the most important approach in AI-based uh, uh, education is the AI-empowered learning. In AI-empowered learning, you have a group of students and you also have a group of teachers. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are trying to understand um, the, the problem at hand and trying to evolve a collaborative, a collective solution uh, to this complex problem uh, on which all of them are working. Okay. So therefore, yes, um, the learners will have an opportunity uh, to even become a leader uh, to this collaborative effort through effective communication. Um, um, uh, and, and then the student can actually enhance the, um, uh, the, the, the human intelligence and his capability and the potential 
by being part of this team and by trying to be a leader to this team. Okay. So three approaches that can be used mm -hmm. um, improving the learning experience of our student. But however, when we use the AI-based learning in our educational system, the ethical component comes. And where does the ethical component come? Um, because you see the entire objective of education okay. is based on the human agency. Uh, when I say the human agency, um, we are trying to teach our uh, students uh, to make choices and um, be responsible to their choices. But unfortunately, what happens is in AI-driven missions, there are already models mm -hmm. and these models based on data and no data is bias-free. Whoever has built this model already has a predetermined notion about this world. He already has a worldview and that is built into this model. Okay. And when using these models uh, to tell the students to uh, use a learning path, that learning path is already biased. Okay. So that we are, we may take away our students from making their own free choices and okay. make decisions. So if there is such a thing, if the students are going away from making unbiased choices, um, if they are not able to break away from the historical patterns of their own behavior, then they cannot be creative. Okay. So the critical issue that comes here is if I use AI-driven machines, can I make our students, can can we make our students creative at all? Okay, so that's, 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 a, that's a very important one, uh, Professor Kumar, you're, you're bringing in there, you know, uh, elaborate... Uh, uh, view on what the challenges are when we are talking about the ethical aspect as well. And you're right, uh, they are saying that a collaborative approach is perhaps the way uh, around this. But uh, Professor Saklani, you know, I'd like to bring you in also quickly uh, because we're running short of time. In terms of uh, the way we are looking at things, it has been less than a year since uh, uh, this, this curriculum on, on uh, AI and uh, Internet of Things has been introduced from classes uh, 6 to 10. And as... Uh, Jiten was also pointing out that perhaps given the pace of development in the field of AI, we will also have to keep on, uh, you know, uh, reworking the way we teach our students or the way we bring them in, in, in interaction with the AI. Yeah, you are right that for that, we must have an extensive orientation program for teachers and parents as well. Because if a, a kid is going to home, parents are not aware what he is doing, then this uh, ethical issues will be more serious. So parents and teachers must have an extensive orientation program and NCRT will try to make the capacity building uh, uh, training programs for the teachers in the field of uh, education in general and the AI in particular. And then parents also have to be involved into this. Without uh, this, as Professor Kumar has rightly said, that how to Assure that, that after all, the purpose of the education is to produce the good human being, ethical human being. And we know that without ethics, we cannot do anything. What type of, what, whatever learning is there, that can be self-destructive if it is not ethical. Okay. So eth ethical aspect has to be brought into there. And then the element of creativity and criticality is also very important while uh, going for this uh, model of education. So both, all these things will come only through orientation programs and we'll have to work time and again. It is not that it is one time process because technology development will take place. And as we know that it is advancing fast and the situation will change after five years or six years. So what we need to do is that we have to update ourselves. And then uh, as far as NCR is concerned, we are the agency which uh, is uh, developing the curriculum, revising the curriculum for school education, and also give, offering the training for teachers, okay. the service training as well as the in-service training. So these okay. elements have to be taken into account while we, uh, developing any modules for the trainers, teacher, uh, uh, teachers, and then parents have, have also to be involved into the pro pro process of the 
um, going for the AI based uh, education. Okay, okay, Professor Saklani. So clearly, what you're pointing out here is that all stakeholders will have to be, uh, you know, up, uh, will have to keep themselves updated on all the developments, uh, keep a pace with the developments in the field of AI as well. Uh, as we're talking about uh, new things coming up every day uh, in the field of artificial intelligence. And there it is uh, all about integration of AI in the field of education and also the way it has to be used. Thank you so much. We're running very short of time. Uh, so we'll have to wrap it up here, but uh, we'll come back again and uh, have a more detailed discussion on various aspects also. Professor Saklani, uh, Professor Jagdish Kumar, uh, Mr. Jitain Jain and uh, Mr. Jaspreet Bindra, all of you, thank you so much for your uh, valuable inputs and insight on uh, the artificial intelligence or the use of artificial intelligence in the field of education. Uh, the key elements, the key opportunities, the potential there, how to leverage that potential and uh, work on those opportunities. But at the same time, also keep in mind uh, the ethical challenges and work around them as well or find solutions uh, for those challenges also. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.